game season. And finally, a win. Yeah, I was like, uh, I thought we, we 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 make it again and we do it again, uh, play again and draw at home, and then Ross finally, um, Reese and Ross turned the thing around again in our favor, which is a kind of a mood changer, I have to say, for for today, and we are happy to end it with a win, and um, yeah, we. I mean, the season one was more or less finished for us. We wanted to end it. We gave some players the opportunity to play who um, didn't have so much minutes. So I'm happy that they could uh, show up and, and take a deserved win. And um, yeah, it is, in, in general, a, a big step in, in the right direction and in terms of consistency for us. If you look at the last years, we have only been in top three. This is, this is very good. Uh, there's always room for improvement. The level of consistency of, of City and Liverpool was too much for us, was too high. Uh, it will not get easier to close this gap because they are, while we are like uh, forced to be passive, um, they, they, they are improving their squads. So, yeah, but uh, this is the challenge and we need to be fast and smart when it's possible to, to have a competitive team. Nick Pugh. Yeah, it's a bit strange. It's a bit strange. So we will have later a dinner together, and and you don't really know what's what's going to happen. Uh, if we are able to sell, do we want to sell? Do we have a chance to get alternatives? So, situation is not only not only for us as as um, as the responsibles for 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 the for the rebuild and the responsibles for 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 transfers. It's also for the players. Strange situation. And uh, you could feel it that uh, like over a long, long period of time, they, we managed to, to put it aside and keep the focus. And, and the longer it got after the national break, it had, it had an impact on us and um, it, it still has. So let's see when finally we will have the chance to act and, and uh, make up because uh, the, the, the disadvantage in, in terms of timing uh, for, for the rebuild is big. And, and we have to be fast and smart. And every day, it grows every day, right? Yeah, it grows every day, of course, while the, the two top teams uh, improve their teams and, and have teams like which are very clear on which they build. It's a kind of a rebuild necessary very for us and makes things more challenging, of course. James Robson. Yeah. Hi, Thomas. How quickly can you actually get on to your uh, transfer planning? No, it's impossible. No, f no, cannot go on holiday. No, it's too much. It's too much uh, things to 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 clarify and have an opinion. Of course, nowadays you can have meetings also on Zoom, so it's not necessary to do anything, uh, everything like in 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 person. But the first days I will be here anyway in the round because my my children are in school and. Uh, so it will start with a bit of a delay, the holidays, but uh, even in holidays, it's, it's also normal, like in a situation like ours, that you stay in contact and you have, like like I said, the, the possibility with Zoom and, and FaceTime to have calls and, and uh, share opinions and, and to move on forward because we need to. Neil Barnett. Two things. Uh, first of all, on fitness, um, no Marcus Alonso today. Yeah. He, lo he he this is a muscle it's a muscle more or less a muscle injury that that affected then the the whole the whole leg both legs and was a this is a lack of a lack of force that he can that he can simply bring so the tests show that he he lacked he lacked mobility and he lacked actually like a force to to be on the pitch and um that's why we miss him now for for so so long um Marcus Alonso was just like he got um, 
he had a, um, a back problem in, in, our, in our first match against West Ham where he needed to go out and then he missed some matches and he had more or less the same through the last games and he played with this pain through uh, the match versus Leicester. Now he felt like that, that the, the muscle contraction goes right through until to, to the hamstrings and that's why it made no sense to, to take this risk for him. Yeah, but I don't know if it would be a chance or it would be another another uh, shift because uh, the, I don't think it's a problem of, of 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 structure that we have because we delivered in the structure very on on very high level and uh, uh, performances. So yes, but we we're, we're looking in every direction. Um, I think that the structure suits our players very well, like not only the players that you mentioned, but also Thiago Silva and, and our midfielders in the build-up. And it suits uh, Reese James very well and Ben Chilwell very well because they have a bit more freedom to attack on both sides. So mm -hmm. there were some reasons to, to play this structure and, and in the way we played it, we were very successful and, and, and on a high level very stable. So. Actually, it's not the plan to change it, but uh, maybe we are forced to. We, we will, you know, it's it's no problem to adapt and it's no problem to find solutions. <laughs> but the problem is that we are like simply forced to be passive. And this is what we absolutely don't like and we are not used to that. So I can answer your question more precisely when, when, when things go moving and go forward and then we can start to act. Andy Dillon. Hi, Thomas. Yeah. Um, firstly, Today's game felt a little bit like a, kind of a, a turning point, like a transition. You know, it's the, it's the final game of the Roman Abramovich era. Tom uh -huh. was waiting outside on the tunnel. Does it have that sense to you that you know it's now we put that era behind us? It's now looking forward with more optimism, perhaps, you know, more stability. And secondly, just on on Mike Dean, the referee, of his last game today. Yeah. You're a relative newcomer to the Premier League. Yeah. I wonder if you got a chance to say anything or make a presentation to him or anything like that. Or anything. Yeah, we did. We did, and we we, we had a quick uh, talk anyway, one hour before before the match, and it was of course with Roy Hodgson and with him. So it was uh, on me to 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 show my respect and my appreciation, and and to tell them that I'm honoured to to be part of their last match. They're huge personalities and huge huge. Uh, um, figures in, in Premier League and international football, so uh, I have nothing but the biggest respect and uh, this is what I told them, so honour for me to be part of it. And, uh, we wish them all the very best for, for their life after, after, fo after football. Um, and the first one, yeah, I think that will sink in in the next days that it was like this. I'm, I'm st st it, um, I still struggle to, to, to fully adapt to the new situation because the new situation is there and is close and is in theory so close, but it's, it's, yeah, but it's not actually. So, um, yeah, I hope it, it will be. And then I think it will, it will like maybe feel more than a new era when, it, when, when things are, when things get started and then when the new season kicks in. Okay, last two, Jacob and then Darren to finish. Hi, Thomas. I know, I know you can't obviously sign players Of course, the of course, and and maybe the defenders will be uh, in international duties if they have a certain quality or play for their national teams. That means anyway they come one week later than than the rest. So that would mean in our case they come on the 9th of July. Um, and, and this is the plan. Uh, hopefully, we can do this and then have everybody for the preseason because uh, it's a it's it's kind of a preseason where you have like at least three three and a half four weeks together, and not a lot of groups are are coming in in different timings. It's it's more or less two groups, and then we have to be quick and fast uh, to to adapt to to the qualities, the personalities of of these new guys. But first of all, we need to be able to sign and, and smart who we sign and, and, uh, and, um, and, and be on point. Last question, Darren. Um, just to be clear off the back of what Jacob was saying, do you have a clear idea of the specific players you want once you get to the 
Yeah, we have. And also, it just obviously it's been a very dramatic day. Yeah. Yeah, it will be a super tough race. Uh, Manchester United will be in the race. Tottenham will be in the race with Antonio Conte for sure. And we want to stay in the race. And, uh, and Liverpool and Man City do everything to even make their, their squads bigger. And they, they, they set the standards so, so high. So this is the challenge in, in, in which we compete. And we have in the moment a huge disadvantage. Um, that's not decisive yet and I, there's no need to make excuses now but it's just a situation in which we are in and we have to be, Cincas just repeat, they have to be as quick as possible and uh, right now it's, it's, it's of course unsatisfying because our hands are tied and uh, we, cannot, we cannot act as we want. We have clear ideas to, um, uh, for the profiles and for the characteristic of these players but um, yeah, it's not like it's not like you put a name on on the list and then you get the player. You have to convince the player. You have to speak to other clubs. You have to convince uh, yourself that this is the player. So there's uh, there's normally a lot of work to do, and uh, and it will it will be the same for for to be competitive next season, while like everybody else tries to close the gap to us. And, and while the two top teams are, are what they are, uh, uh, a benchmark of consistency. So this is the situation and, and from there on we, we do our very best to be, to be competitive because uh, this is what we want to be. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks.